Hello and welcome to another QA Automan tutorial. In this lesson, we're going to talk about setting up our very first rest assured project using Kotlin language and Gradle. We're going to kind of go through the steps on setting up with Kotlin with the Kotlin module, the two ways we're going to write our tests and showcase some of the simple things just like get. So let's jump in. So we're going to be working with IntelliJ. I'm using 2024.2.1. So when you get here, we're just going to create a new project. Now, yours is going to look somewhat different, but what we care about is the new project being in Kotlin. We want to make sure we are set to Gradle. I'm using the newest, uh, not the newest, but I'm using Java 21. Our Gradle DSL will be in Kotlin. We can also, there's most support, you probably see Groovy, uh, or I like Kotlin. Since we are in Kotlin, we should just kind of remain consistent. The location uh, is there. We're going to name this one. And then we'll just call this, uh, I'm going to call mine rest assured project, actually example project. We are going to use the wrapper. 8.8 uh, .8 is fine. Uh, org. Uh, don't this advanced settings. Uh, this is just me that I, I'm, I'm managing here. Now you can choose different Gradle versions if you'd like within the wrapper. I will explain the wrapper in, in a little bit, but, uh, I'm fine with the 8.8. .8. So, um, you know, make sure you are using the group ID as, you know, maybe the website you're working on, whatever that is. I don't have one. So I'm doing this, um, and then make sure you're using dashes, no spaces in your artifact ID. So I think this looks good. We have everything we need and we're going to create. We are building out our project down below. Um, you probably get some pop-ups. Uh, everything should compile, no errors or anything like that, hopefully. We have, you can, it gives you some things like the main function here, uh, but we're gonna be working mostly in the test section of this. Now, what one thing I kind of talked about is that the idea about Gradle and Gradle wrapper. Now the wrapper, is the ability for you to kind of have a self-contained Gradle version and kind of Gradle environment specific to your project. And this is really great because you can work with something small, like a lower version or higher version. It doesn't have to be the one that's specifically on your computer or on the OS that you're building on. So I always recommend using Gradle wrapper. Uh, you'll see with the kind of commands we use in, in, in time, but for right now, we are going to just leave this as is and really focus on the testing portion here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add our test implementation. We have the Kotlin test. So we're going to focus, uh, we're going to use kind of what's built in and, and kind of stay consistent. Now, if someone's using a test NG or something like that, um, I can show in another video how we can implement something like that. But for now, we're going to keep all the default values and default things. But we want to add our rest assured. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add rest assured in here. We'll do the test implementation. Um, and this value uh, is something you can find off the Maven repo by looking like IO rest assured. But we're going to use 5.5.0. And secondly, because we are in Kotlin, you want to add the Kotlin module. Now I'm going to show you why, uh, what, what tools are brought from the Kotlin module so that, you know, you can see how, and, and what the importance of this is while writing in Kotlin. In my opinion, it's a lot cleaner, but I'm going to show you both methods in both ways. So in here, uh, we're going to create a new class and this class will just call my first test, uh, no spaces my first API test. And here we go. And we are going to write our function, which is a, um, you know, and I've talked about naming conventions in a previous video, and that still kind of holds true today. In my personal opinion, it's kind of like what it is we're testing, what the kind of scenario are we looking for in state, and then what the expected result is. So, we're going to be testing a get call and, and this is going to be the critical path. So, um, using, uh, valid data, you know, expect 200 response or something. 
there's a lot of people that can talk about naming functions. And the reason I like this is, you know, when you are looking at logs, you kind of have an idea of what is being tested. You're like, oh, here's that get call that's using validate and what you're expecting, right? Uh, so we're going to annotate this with the test um, that is using the Kotlin test library. Now into the kind of the meat and potatoes, everything. So I'm going to be using this, this website. I'll just paste it here, which is the restful booker hero Q app. And this is something that's used for like just testing APIs and messing with stuff. I, you know, recommend if, you know, if you are, have a, another website to use, it's a little more complex. I recommend doing that. I mean, this is great if you don't have one, but you know, in your line of work or something where you have a, a website like Facebook or something, I think I recommend real life use cases. Um, I'm just using this for now just because it's for testing. And we're going to start just something very basic. I'm going to add a description here, which is um, testing get uh, this endpoint. So let's start. So rest assured is uses kind of that cu the cucumber, the BDD uh, behavior driven development, which is like the given when, you know, then, right, which allows you to kind of use like human words, of like, like, what is it we're doing given we have this call when you pass this data, or you pass you do something, then something will occur or, or, or happen, right, we're gonna do the exact same thing. In our case, we're going to say, so you start with given. And that mm, ah, so when you do add your dependencies, make sure that you always rebuild the load Gradle changes. And now if you can ever find that, you can always go to Gradle and come to tasks and come over here and build, which is in the top right in the far right. If you can't find it there, um, uh, Google it. <laughs> um, I don't know. So I, this should always be here. If you're using a Gradle project, it should show up. So um, I always like to use this in the top right. It's just nice because it, it lets me know that changes have been made. This will kind of complain when there's vulns, which is great. Um, always consider what's going on here. Always make sure you're aware. Uh, for this case, we can over skip this. Not something we need to, to care about right at this moment. So running the given, um, we're going to import. So now we can say given. And so what this is going to start creating is your request specification. So everything that's due through request, um, you know, what parameters you want to send, um, you know, headers, all those things that come with the request, this is what we're building. So given that, uh, and, and the, and this call, by the way, doesn't have, uh, parameters. It does have parameters. Ah, it has uh, query parameters, but we're just going to do a basic, just call right now, going back to what we're doing. It's just, you know, given that we have nothing we're not adding anything so you still always have to start with the given dot when so i'm going to hit when and you're going to notice something interesting right you're going to have these back ticks around when and that's because in kotlin this is a reserved keyword um, something you can do in in kotlin is like a switch statement and you say when um and some condition right true then you know do some action this is true, right? And then the other one is false, right? Do some other action, right? Um, so this is why you have to put in back ticks. And this is the way you would write it as also if you were writing it in a Java language or something like that. So when dot, and this is a get call. So uh, get, and we put in our URL. So we're going to put this URL just straight in. Actually, I think that's it. I mean, this is this is given. I think can we even do without given? Yeah, um, you can even just go when you call this, do some sort of action we want to do is verify that the number of bookings that we get is let's say greater than one. So let's just see just really quick. We're going to run this and see the output that we get. We need to, so we ran it, it passed because obviously we're not asserting anything. Now what we're missing is we wanted to see, you know, some logging that occurs, right? So we're gonna go back to that given dot log dot uh, all that will give us our request. 
then log dot all. So uh, I don't like this. I, I want it to be like this. This is nice. But um, the reason we are putting given log all then log all when between given is our request. When you hit then, that is now we are in response territory. So now these are everything after this is all of our response stuff. That's including the when. So if you highlight hover over this, you'll notice now it's this is the request. Uh, sorry, this is under the, the request specification. And now we have uh, a return of response specification. So these are our response stuff. And the reason we have to do the two logs alls is because we want to log the request and the response. So now when I run this, now we're seeing everything, right? We're seeing um, server cowboy. Uh, we got the reporting endpoints. Um, and OK, so this is this is a bunch of the it looks like headers. These are all of our headers. And then this is the number of bookings we have. And we have so many on your in your case, if you're like, well, we need to assert something here. Um, and I'm looking at this and maybe it's, um, we don't know. It's always, it's always some amount of number, but what we do want to know is at least maybe say like, okay, well, every booking ID that we have here should be, um, of integer and maybe say like, this has to be greater than whatever the criteria is. We'll just say the criteria here is going to be five. So now we got to This is where we get to do our certs using a little bit because now we're adding a then here. If I added a then at the bottom, does this? Does this give me my both? Let's double check. OK, it does. OK. Yeah. Given when then I think just stick to this. I know I said given then when and that was confusing. Um, that, that was um, I, I'm going to keep I'm keeping this all in here. So given when and then so if we do log all here, it's going to log the 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 response to so that that's all that matters. So so given here when we get then log all and now this is where we start doing our asserts. So we're going to take the body and this is using Hamcrest matchers. So taking the body and this will start using JPath uh, is also what you use for writing your query for how we want to access this. So I'm just going to show you an example is like this, this is starts with an array. So we're gonna start with the first item in the array that it's booking ID. So I'm going to say booking ID, the first one. And I'm going to say equal to uh, 4184. So um, we have core matchers, matchers. And so, um, you know, you, you, you'll start to kind of look at this, but like matchers is the pre built set of matchers that we're going to do. So we're going to build, we're going to start with the matchers. Um, so always make sure you're, you're using that bit. Uh, you, just because if you go, if I go to these matchers, this is the pre pre built set of, of functions that we can use. That's using matcher the core and built these, um, functions out for us. So, so we're going to match the body to booking IDs from four. So if I run this, we should get a green. We did not get green. We got to fail because it looks like it's in random order. That being in random order. Um, again, something that we always want to make sure you read the criteria here. Again, this is a test. This is a test API. What we want to do is, um, because of the randomness that is existing there, um, we're going to do a has item. And when we put in the booking ID in that response, um, which you can show here. If you just put one of the keys in and it has it's part of the array, it will grab all of the booking IDs and put them into a list for you. So if I look at this list and I say, you know, as has to at least have this item in it, right? And I hit go, right? Boom, we got it. Test results were passed. They were green. Everything was successful. Fantastic. Now let's put something that doesn't exist, right? I hit go. Now, this is why 
um, when it comes to writing your asserts, it's always good to write them in the body because when it fails, you come down to the bottom on the failure. Whoa. So let's scroll, <laughs> scroll to the top and saying JSON path booking ID doesn't match a collection containing nine, eight, seven, nine, la, 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 la. And here, and it gives you all the values that are possible in the booking ID. This is the, the, it's like a basic quick, um, let's actually put something that did was, it, uh, 65. There's one 65. Wonderful. So now that we have this working, right? Great. Um, this is the Java version or the kind of out of the box version. Now I'm going to showcase what a Kotlin module and the point of the module is and what your thing will look like with that type of test. So I'm going to, um, get call, okay. Java, Java, make a new one and showcase the Kotlin, Kotlin version. So you're going to see some similarities here now, because when is something that is used, um, instead of using this kind of, uh, like fluent or not fluent, but I'm um, kind of chaining the, the calls are together. Now we can do given, and then we put all the things in here that we want to do. Um, in our case, we want to log all right. And then we can have our when, and what are we going to do? We want to call the get. So get is available. Let's put our URL here. And then what are we doing? We're logging all and we want to, um, we don't do dot, uh, we're logging all. And what are we doing? We're doing body. We're also going to check the body is booking ID, oh, booking ID. And I'm just going to copy this one over. So this one has a lot of dots and everything, but this is, I, I like this a lot, right? We have the ability to really like, you don't have to do the dots. You can kind of keep everything all aligned. Uh, you're just kind of calling the functions and it will call it in that order. And the same thing, you know, again, should happen. like this should pass. No, no problem. This is what that the module, this, uh, sorry, this Kotlin extensions is, is adding, giving the ability to write the given when, and then, so we're going to do another example and we're going to keep going down the Kotlin route for, uh, moving forward. This will carry over and translate like this one pretty easily. But what I want to do with the same call is give the ability and show the having like names, for example, we're going to add, um, in this call, the same call, but, uh, actually let's do this. We're gonna have a new one and we're gonna we're remove this Kotlin thing. So using using valid first and last name. Now I always advocate for more than just expecting 200 responses. I know I was doing that and that was my like test. You should always do more than it should actually, you shouldn't even say like expect 200 responses. What it should be is something like expect uh, booking ID returns, um, uh, correct data or something, right? Like you should be more, if it is like a 204 or something like that, sure. But if you get a 200 and it has a body, it's always important to check the body. We should always check response, like status code, oops, status code is 200. In my personal opinion, don't say like it just expected 200, You're, you should be expecting more. We should be having really like body verification is way more important. So in this case, we're going to expect a uh, correct ID. I don't know what that ID is yet with this particular, um, endpoint, but we're going to write it. I'll just write it out, right? Given. And now in the given, this is where we start introducing things like the headers or query parameters or things like that. So we're going to add our first query parameter. Query per param, which is in our case, first name. And that first name is going to be Sally. We're going to add another query param. This one will be last name and this one will be 
brown. So given when we get our URL. Now you notice I'm doing a lot of copy pasting here, right? That is when you start copy pasting, something's up. Okay, we need to start thinking about how we want to do this. So what I'm going to do here is at the top, I'm going to say, you know what, let's add our roots, right? Um, oops. So let's add our roots here. So we're going to say this is our val get booking IDs. We'll say path. Uh, booking ID is path, and that would be slash booking, right? And then what we do here at the top is we kind of have our constant val URI. URI equals. So we, what is it yelling at me? Oh, companion object. That's right. Companion object. So we have our URI and you're like, well, you know, how are we going to piece these together? Now we can do it two ways, which we can add the URI and kind of do one of these things. And then we have the booking, which would be the, um, right? You can do something like this, right? Uh, and which is kind of uh, weird, a little in, in my opinion, right? So you can add in your given, you can say my base URI will be my URI here. So now when I make any of this calls, I will always have the base URI be this. And now I could just start submitting my path. So like, this makes it really clean, really clear, especially like for code readability. Um, you can even add this in the base, like in the rest assured setup or config, but we're not gonna do that right now. I am now kind of, I can go, go back and do the base URI get put this. So now if ever booking as like, Oh, well now we're going to do something else. It's like, you know, V2 or something. Now we can just change it in one spot and then we kind of get it changed everywhere, which is going to be really, really nice. Um, and same with the, the, you know, the URI, maybe it's like, Oh, well, we're going to change our domain for whatever reason. It's going to be dot net or something like it, it gives like a ways to change in one spot and, and things like that. So kind of pushing forward, then um, we set the first name and last name. We're going to expect a certain set of IDs. Um, I'm gonna say IDs, book IDs. I don't know what those are right now. So I'm just going to log. Uh, you should, if you are running a test, you should have before you even ru run the call, you should know exactly what should be returned. Um, again, because it's a test API, I don't have that luxury to kind of do all that kind of stuff. So I just want to call that out. So it's really important. Uh, oh, shoot. Yeah, just run this one. Ah, interesting. I haven't. Uh, okay. So nothing is returning. And that's because I haven't set up that type of data yet in the test API. Uh, however, I do want to call out that we can see, if we look at our request here, uh, our URL, um, which is, oh, I don't have log all. That is important. So here we go. Now, something you'll see here is we now have our query params added to our URL. It also is added in this bit here in the rest assured uh, logs. But the what's more important than what's here is this, right? This is what matters. So we see first name Sally, last name Brown. So we know that our career params are being added, which is fantastic. I hope this is really useful, quickly showcasing how you can start setting things up. You can start looking into how to get these these calls going. Um, in my next tutorials, I'm going to start going down posts and updates and auth. Um, so I really hope this was useful just to kind of understanding Kotlin module, how to kind of get it going, how to set up, get your get calls going, uh, and get your, your body 
check uh, responses, you know, asserted and checked. So until then, I'll see you online.